Hey everybody, this is that German guy, Josh Runquist, and it is my distinct honor to be here with one of my biggest drumming heroes, Mr. Igor Cavalera, who's going to be playing here at First Avenue with Cavalera Conspiracy, and opening up is Dark Angel, Corrosion and Conformity Blind, and Lodi Kong. How's it going? It's great, great, man. We're kind of like uh, halfway through the, the tour, and it's really cool. I mean, it's a, it's a cool lineup, and we really enjoy all the bands playing, you know, like you said, from Lodi Kong through COC, mm -hmm. through Death Angel. It's it's quite a diverse lineup and uh, I really enjoy that. I think whoever the fans who come, they, they will get quite uh, different flavors of, of hard music. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really important for us. Oh, very much so. And those are always my favorite kind of shows to see are the ones that have that good dynamics and diversity to it. Yeah, I mean, of course you, you can't go too crazy on it. Otherwise mm -hmm. it becomes like weird, but mm -hmm. I think you know it's always good like I remember back in the days we did a, a tour with uh, you wearing the shirt like mm -hmm. Napalm Death, Death. Mm -hmm. Sick of It All and Sacred Reich you know those kind of lineups for me they're really cool because mm -hmm. it's like even though at the end it's, it's really about heavy music but it's cool when you go to a show and you're not listening to the same style and too much of the same through the whole night especially with tons of bands I mean I've been to festivals where it seems like they're playing the same song all night and it's mm -hmm. quite boring sometimes, you know. Mm -hmm. So I like to diverse things a bit, you know. Oh, very much so. And it, and it shows off and um, of course uh, you guys are here uh, promoting your newest album which uh, came out last year, which again, like we were just talking about, I think is a great dynamic, diverse album that you guys have put out. I mean, now that you're a few albums in, it feels like you guys are really hitting your niche. Yeah, I mean, we're really happy, you know, it really translates uh, state of mind, especially where me and Max were at the time, and the album really re reflects that very well, which is a very raw sounding, you know, drum wise, I think it's very uh, straightforward, like very minimalistic in, in different ways, what I try to do with it, so it was a lot of fun doing it, and at the same time, I, I'm, I'm having, you know, a great time translating that into the live show playing those new songs live it's it's really cool uh, is there a difference between uh, playing it on the album and playing it live do you switch it up a lot or or do you stick it's to what's on the album yeah it's it's always different i always change a bit you know when we do a live version of it i don't i try not to play exactly like the album which it's cool but also i, I like to add something extra to it when we do it live so live I try to add a few rows and, and sometimes, you know, try different, you know, patterns and, and things like that. So it becomes more, I don't know, more fun to do it than try just to do a replica of the record. Oh, very much so. I mean, uh, being a drummer, I mean, sometimes it gets a little too repetitive if you keep doing the same beat over and over. So if you switch it up just yeah. a little bit enough, you know, like sometimes like fills or adding yeah. little yeah. parts yeah. in there, it's so Even cool. like changing you know, little simple stuff like instead of doing a hi hat, you know, thing, you, you go through the ride and, and and try to switch things up. Those things, you know, as a musician, I, I think it's cool. You know, it's like it keeps you more, I don't know, like fresh. You know, in the state of mind, like you said, instead mm -hmm. of doing the same thing over and over every night. So it's cool to add a few things. Oh, very much so. Uh, so, also with that said, have you changed up uh, your setup at all, or are you uh, sticking to what you've been doing? It, I think it's very different from uh, from the last tour I did with Cavalera, which, again, it's a very simple setup, which it has, you know, a single bass, just uh, two toms, one floor, so it's a very basic kit, and with that I try to do all the crazy stuff from the old songs into a new setup. Again, it's a really cool exercise as a drummer to try to change things up on your setup so you, you have a, a different way of playing old stuff when you had like sometimes more toms or more cymbals and things like that. Mm -hmm. Trying to get more more out of one tom or two toms at the most, you know. D do you find that much of a challenge at all? Like some of the older Sepultura songs? It is. It is a challenge, and but at the same time, it's a it's a really cool challenge because it's like 
it's almost like you have to learn again how to play those songs in a different situation so it's a really cool challenge not not th something that i suffer with it mm -hmm. i have more more joy trying to do it than than you know the other way around oh sure yeah it's it's amazing it's not until you either add or remove a piece of gear from your kit you realize how much things can change yeah i mean speaking drums it, it can definitely change your whole game you know just by moving sometimes things are around or even like getting your toms to be more flat instead of like a certain angle all those things that make you play different and by doing that i think you, you keep learning and that's a for me is the best exercise for any drummer it's not to get too comfortable with what you do but always try to learn more and more and you know like i think drumming is a never-ending learning process you know rather than being satisfied with what you do I'm, I'm not a never uh, satisfied and I think that's always good for an, uh, any kind of musician whether you're just yeah. uh, starting out or as professional as uh, you've been going for as long as you have you know just like always wanting to be inspired to try something new yeah I mean of course you know for any musician but especially drumming some drummers mm -hmm. they, they have a tendency of just being in the back and, and just doing you know like something more like just being part of a band and I think that's that's really boring you know mm -hmm. I like to the to bring the drums a bit more to the table where you feel like you, you're writing music together uh, the songs have more of a drum approach to it so mm -hmm. for me I that's always what I've been about and I, I'm really lucky that you know especially with Max he, he's also has a very uh, percussive mind which allows me and him to experiment with with the drums as being a, a very important part of it rather than just a background thing or whatever so it's really really cool to do that yeah and that's what i try to do in my drumming as well like one of my favorite albums of all time just to plug it out there is chaos ad and just like hearing what you do like uh, hitting like the upbeats and the downbeats on the different toms and cymbals rather than just like doing the simple basic basic beats that could have been there just inspired me in my own playing yeah i mean it's, it's fun at the end you know like again the drumming for me it has to be fun it can't be like just a struggle or just a technique you got to have a good time when you do it and the more you do that i think the more you have a a natural response to your drumming and then of course by playing more and more you you develop more your technique mm -hmm. so I, I always tell like you know my my friends or, or other drummers and, and it's like it's about having a good time and all that other stuff it's gonna come with time mm -hmm. but if you're not really enjoying what you're doing and I think it it can ruin the whole vibe of, of drumming you know oh, it's so very true and uh, you were talking about in your current setup, uh, you're actually just using one bass drum rather than two bass drums. Yeah. Do you find that to be a challenge at all, going from two no, bass drums to a double pedal? It's the same thing. It's the same, same thing. thing. I mean, sound-wise, let's say if tomorrow I'm going to record something, I would definitely go for a, for a double bass because I think it does make a difference. But live, I think it's fine. You know, it's it's just a, a bit of a change. Maybe I'll go back to to double bass in a bit. But just this tour, I'm trying to do like a single bass, and it's fine, you know. I don't, I don't think it's much of a, a different. Unless you play every song double bass all the time, then I would say like maybe better to have the, mm -hmm. the double thing. Uh, so you don't feel much uh, difference on the left pedal. No, uh, no, you right? get used yeah. to it. You mm -hmm. get used to it. You know, like especially like I said, mm -hmm. my my bass drums like patterns, they they're very easy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like simple stuff that you can do with a with a double pedal with no problem. Nothing crazy. Uh, so, what are you using for a double pedal on this tour? Um, I'm using the Pro, the Devil. Oh, Demon Drive. Demon Drive, yeah. Okay. Demon Drive, and it's I love it. They're very very solid, and at the same time they they're quite light. So so you get a good response to it. But, and still, we can play super fast with it, and and it seems it feels very light rather than a, than a heavy pedal like I tried before. Mm -hmm. So I I think it's it's a good choice. Oh, cool. So is that the chain drive or the direct drive for the oh, ones? With the chain. Oh, the, the chain. chain. Yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah. those ones are very nice. Yeah. Yeah. They're really really fun. Also to 
to do like fast and, and sometimes just like slow with a lot of punch to it. It has a good uh, response to it. Oh, very cool. Well, uh, I just got the wrap it up sign. Uh, uh, there were so many more questions I would love to ask know, you. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we can uh, do this again the next time you come yes, to town. definitely, definitely. Uh, yeah, we'll I try. absolutely loved it. Uh, just one last thing. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to bring up that I've not gotten to yet? I don't know. I think we cover pretty much everything, you know. Mm-hmm. But I'm just happy to to be here and uh, and doing this tour, and uh, mm-hmm. it's cool to to be back in this such a a cool venue, you know, who hosts so many crazy shows in the past. So it's always fun to be here. Oh. Well, I'm I'm glad to see you. I can't wait to see you in a few hours. Uh, this will actually be my first time seeing you. Uh, cool. Which is amazing being a fan as long as I have. This is the first time I get to see you, and I can't wait to see everything that you got in store. Thank you. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, once again, that was Igor Cavalera, and this is that German guy, Josh Ronquist. Thank you. Thank you.